Hi everyone, it's Shem. Here is another video. This time it's about how to install a lithium-ion battery onto Honda CRF250L and why you might want to consider it. I'm also going to be installing a dedicated uh, jump starting cable uh, specific for the power bank that I use. So that's gonna be part of this video. And as always, because my videos are pretty detailed, uh, they take quite a bit of time so if you cannot be bothered to watch it all please use the shortcuts in the description be below the video to jump to the section that you're actually interested in right let's start with the reason why to me it's all about the weight saving if you had watched any of my other videos you will know that i'm passionate about weight reduction and one of the uh, relatively affordable ways of shaving quite a lot of weight from your CRF250L is a battery replacement. The bike uses an old-fashioned uh, lead-acid battery and this is a, a lithium-ion battery which is significantly uh, lighter than the stock old-fashioned battery. How much lighter we'll, we'll find out exactly later uh, but to me this is the main reason. Depending on what part of the world you live in, there might be different battery brands available to you. I live in the UK and one of the fairly popular brands in here is called Shido, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. And uh, this is one of the reasons why I actually ended up purchasing uh, this particular battery. Another reason is that I have a friend who lives in Portugal and he's got multiple motorcycles and he has been running these batteries for a number of years now and he's really happy with them. So that gave me an extra confidence to actually go ahead and, and purchase a battery from this brand. I've also considered a battery from a brand called Anti-Gravity. Uh, they are a well-respected brand and they do batteries with a clever restart functionality. What it is, is like a, a jump starter built into your battery uh, that uses the residual energy in the battery. So let's say that you've been running too many accessories and uh, you, you discharge the battery to the level where uh, the battery wasn't capable of starting up your bike. You could then go in, press the button on the battery, it would charge uh, the, the jump starter that was built in the battery uh, up to the level where the jump starter was capable of starting up your bike through the battery terminals. So basically you wouldn't have to mess about with, uh, you know, connecting any additional wires, anything like this. You just press the button, wait for it to, to charge up using the residual energy and then use that accumulated energy to start your bike, which I really like the idea, but it's also quite pricey. Uh, it's probably 50 to 60 pounds more expensive than one of these batteries from Shidio without this functionality. So you can purchase one of these between, you know, 90 to 110 pounds. And a gravity battery, you're probably talking between 150 to 160, maybe 170 pounds. So definitely more expensive. That wouldn't necessarily put me off, um, but uh, I came across uh, power banks with restarting capability. I didn't even know they existed. Uh, and uh, my thinking was, I, whenever I go for longer trips, I always carry a power bank with me. Why not carry a power bank which has a restarting capability? So instead of purchasing a more expensive battery, I purchased a cheaper battery and the power bank with restarting capability, which was pretty much the same price. On top of that, I also thought instead of, you know, faffing about with the power bank and, and uh, crocodile leads uh, that I would have to plug into the battery or something like this, I'm going to hardwire a, a little bit of a harness, which is a dedicated harness for, for the power bank that I purchased. And what this means is that if my battery ever got dis discharged to the level uh, where it wasn't capable of starting the bike, I could connect my power bank through these leads and start a bike using that. So I wouldn't have to take any plastics, connect directly to the bank, to the battery. Uh, this, this lead will be exposed somewhere on the back of the bike. So if I ever uh, needs to restart the bike, I can just use that attachment. So that's the idea. Before we move on, I wanted to mention that uh, depending on the model year of your Honda CRF250L or CRF250 Rally, you might have a different lead acid battery installed in it. 
I think around 2017, Honda changed their lead acid battery slightly. So the, all the models after 2017 use slightly different batteries. I don't think the, the, mod, the differences are huge, but they are there nonetheless, and it's worth knowing. And it's worth knowing because uh, lithium ion battery manufacturers might recommend different lithium ion battery as a replacement for that particular battery. So to save you time, I've put those details in the video description so you can have a look depending on the, what model year you have, what's your stock battery model and as well as what's the recommended equivalent from the lithium ion manufacturer Shido. So check that out. Right, we're now ready to remove the stock battery. The battery is located on the left-hand side of the bike behind this cover here. So the first thing that we have to do is to remove this plastic cover. This cover is held in three places. It's held here at the bottom by number five uh, hex bolt. It, it's also held by a plastic pin that goes into a rubber grommet in here, so that can be pulled out by hand. And it's also held by two uh, pins that are sticking out from, from this fairing. So once we undo the bolt here, we pull the bag of it out. We're gonna have to slide this plastic cover towards the end of the bike to prevent these pins from snapping. These are the two plastic pins that I was referring to, and these are the slots where they go into. So this is why you have to slide the fairing towards the back of the bike as opposed to pulling it like this. Here we have the stock lead acid battery, and it's currently held by this metal bracket. So we first have to remove this bracket, and it's held by two uh, hex five bolts, so we can use the same spanner to remove that. Once the bracket is removed, we can then remove the mm, connectors from the battery terminals. And it's always a, a good practice to start with the negative connector first and then remove the positive one after. The reason for that is that a negative connector is connected to all the metal components in your bike. So if you were to leave that on the battery and try to disconnect that positive connector first, and let's say you've got your spanner on here and you accidentally touched a metal part on the bike, you could shorten the battery. So this is why it's a good safety measure to always start with the negative connector being disconnected first and then move on to positive after. Uh, when you install the battery, it's a reversal of that process. So you basically start with connecting the positive terminal first and then you connect the uh, negative terminal last. Okay, with the stock battery out, let's see how they compare in terms of weight. So I've got a stock battery on the scale and that's 2.7 kilograms. So that's pretty hefty. Okay, and if I compare it to the lithium ion battery, that's just short of a, kilo, a kilogram, 861 grams. So uh, we're talking just short of uh, two kilograms saving for approximately 100 pounds. So. Not bad, pretty happy with that. As you might have noticed, the lithium ion battery is significantly shorter than the stock battery. And uh, unfortunately it doesn't come with any spacers. So initially I was planning to just put it in the battery tray like this, uh, maybe put some foam in here and, and connect it up, no problem. Unfortunately, the negative, uh, or the cable that connects to the negative terminal uh, is quite short. So in order for it to reach the lower terminal, I would have to uh, drill through a, a battery tray over here. And I'm sure if I, if I like the idea of doing that. So I'll probably try to find some closed uh, cell foam and try to raise the battery to the height where the original, original battery was or just ever so slightly lower. Luckily, I had some closed cell phone uh, lying around the garage. So I think uh, I'm gonna put uh, one layer here. Not sure the thickness looks like maybe 10, 15 millimeters. Uh, so one will go underneath the battery and then the battery kind of uh, slides 
uh, neatly against the foam inserts here so it's fairly fairly uh, uh, rigid it doesn't wobble about in the tray and then i'm gonna put another foam piece in here to prevent the battery from you know bashing up and down although it feels pretty sturdy so i think that this is what i'm gonna go with shame uh, it doesn't come with any spacers but you know if i've been there of uh, uh, scrap material you can create a spacer yourself just make sure it's a closed cell foam if you're planning to do any water crossing uh, i found a piece of foam and i was really excited because the height was perfect but then it wasn't a closed cell foam and i think i do lots of water crossing so it wouldn't be ideal to have a you know foam that kind of soaks up water and sits underneath the battery and then takes ages to dry and potentially gets moldy so uh, you know if you're gonna do that you a closed cell foam a neoprene or or some sort of i don't know polyestyrene thing that doesn't absorb water right before we connect it all up i just wanted to make sure that the battery isn't faulty or anything of this nature so i've got a multimeter connected to it and we're reading 13.15 uh, volts which is about right for the lithium ion battery uh, it's probably about 12 something volts for the old-fashioned lead acid battery i think lithium ion batteries always uh, run slightly higher so uh, th th this looks fine i don't have any issues with that and then we also have a, a charge tester at the top of the battery so if i press and hold it the three blue leds tells tell me that the battery is full so everything uh, looks to be fine in terms of connecting the battery as i've mentioned uh, before we gonna start with the positive terminal first and then we're gonna move on to negative terminal also in terms of connecting stuff as you can see i've got a lot of different things here main thing for me is connecting the, the bike uh, circuits to the battery so this is a number one and that should be your main connection everything else can be on top of it so the bike starter my 12 volt accessory outlet my usb charger and so on all of that can go on top of it uh, this is your most important connection so the, the thing that connects the battery to the bike should always go directly on the connectors because uh, this are this is your most important most important connection so let's crack on with it The battery is connected now uh, i've tested the ignition on everything seems to be fine i've taken some time to root the cables to prevent them from rubbing against any kind of sharp metal edges so that should be fine so the next step is for us to install the metal bracket that holds the battery and um, again it's held by these two bolts here the manual state seven newton meters uh, of torque for each bolt Right, the battery is secured now, everything's connected, so we need to put the uh, plastic cover back on and we're gonna do it in reverse of how we removed it. So we're gonna slide it onto those two plastic pins. We're gonna push that uh, plastic pin into a rubber grommet and then we're gonna put the uh, hex bolt over here. I'm gonna put a drop of Loctite in to prevent it from coming loose and it's just hand tied. I don't think we have uh, specs from manual for that. Right, we're done. 
Thank you very much for watching. If you have any comments or questions, please write them down in the comment section below the video. Also, I would really appreciate if you could share your experience uh, with lithium ion batteries. This is the first one I've installed, so I'm not quite sure what to expect. Are they as reliable as the lead acid batteries? If, you, if you've got an experience with them, please uh, write it down in the comment section. Also, if you find this type of content useful, please consider subscribing. See you in the next video.